understanding of glass's history, we have to go back, way back, all the way back to Mesopotamia 35 centuries ago. So glass is made at that point very simply, right? It's by melting glass and sort of dropping it into molds or wrapping it around a core and, and letting the core burn away. And you see glass really being used to hold things as containers, as bowls. You get to the period of, the, of Roman glass making and the Romans discover that if you take that molten glass and you put it on the end of a, a hollow pipe, you can blow into the pipe and you can begin to create big bubbles. And so with that, you can create bigger and bigger pieces of glass. Around the mid-15th century, Venice, Italy becomes the center of glassmaking. It is during this time that glassmaking becomes a little bit more refined. So the Venetians create Cristallo, which is actually an imitation of rock crystal. It's very pure, beautiful glass, and they begin to make very uh, thin, elegant forms. And again, uh, many of the techniques that were developed by the Venetians in the mid-15th century are used today by glassmakers. Skipping ahead, we find ourselves in the American colonies, where glassmaking becomes America's first industry, and due to scarce resources, America's first failed industry. Glassmaking factories appear in the 1700s. By the 1830s, mechanical processes are created so that glassmaking becomes mass-produced, and you see, um, for instance, uh, factories springing up around the Northeast. So as glass is mass-produced, you become, uh, you see simpler pieces, you see a uh, higher level of production, it becomes more affordable. As glassmakers started to understand the material, expansion on the artistic side of glass begins. As we start to move into the late 19th and early 20th centuries, you begin to look at uh, glass as it's used in the Art Nouveau and Art Deco movements. And so glass may still have form and function, but uh, there's more artistic expression. In 1962, there was a series of workshops in Toledo run by Dominic Labino and Harvey K. Littleton. Harvey Littleton actually was a, a resident of Corning, grew up in Corning. And they uh, unveiled these smaller ovens, the smaller glass making equipment that allowed artists to work in smaller studios. So they came out of the factory setting and began to work on their own. So there was this individual art, uh, expression in glass that, that uh, created what we call the American studio glass movement. And that brings us to today, where glass is used for both its function and its artistic properties. From huge artistic sculptures to simple cups, glass has become one of the most versatile materials on earth.